sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. 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 I couldn't resist guys, I'm sorry. You know, I see an opportunity for a meme, I take it. But memes aside, the Halloween update is live for all of your spoopy needs on Araxis. And let's be real, all eyes are on this thing, the Seeker HLX crossbow. And I think we need to talk about a few things regarding this weapon today. So, g'day there once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 and um, yeah look, let's just get into it. All right, so one thing I wanna make clear really quickly here, this is not going to be a weapon review. I know that some of you want such a review right quick, but we already know that this weapon is set to be heavily nerfed this week. So a review at this point would be kind of premature and would just end up making the video irrelevant far too quickly. So patience is a virtue everyone, but we still need to talk about this weapon, its nature, its pathway to the live server, and where we are now. This is gonna be a catalyst for a much wider conversation today. For those of you who are a little bit out of the loop, here's the rundown. This here is the Seeker HLX. It's a heavy crossbow that can be equipped in the primary weapon slot of infiltrators and light assaults. It fires heavy hard light bolts that are incredibly accurate and damaging out to some pretty extreme distances. The stats as of this video are a 600 maximum damage at 8 meters, dropping off to 450 minimum damage out at the 150 meter mark. Now, for those of you who are already shaking in your boots, it sports a 1.5 times headshot multiplier, which means that it can one shot an infiltrator, not run running nano armor cloak, but that's about it. It isn't capable of one-shotting everyone in the game when they are full health. That is at least when you're running the stock ammunition, but we'll get more into that a bit later on. The weapon also sports a 40 round magazine, which, yeah, that's right, you're seeing that right has no corresponding ammo pool. What's the deal? Well, this is a weapon that takes all of its admittedly limited ammunition pool into a single quote unquote mag, I guess you can call it, and will continue to fire uninterrupted until you actually run out of ammo. If you find an engineer's ammo pack, it'll deposit the ammo straight back into the weapon's quote unquote mag without any reload time required. So that raises some red flags right there on its own merit, but that's not the least of our concerns, believe it or not, not at all. Enter the fracture rounds. So you thought you were worried about light assaults having a DMR. How about having their own personal Hesh round? The Fracture round currently trades 150 of its direct damage for 250 splash damage over three meters. And while it does also decrease the fire delay of the weapon by 0.1 seconds, it basically gives you a free Hesh cannon in your infantry loadouts. Want to be the first proper artillery piece in Planet Side 2? Equip Fracture Bolts, the capacitor arms for more rounds, take an infiltrator and sit up on a hill with a beacon and go to town. How about becoming your own personal AC-130 gunship that's more effective than a liberator. Well, slap the drifter jump jets on a light assault with max rank aerial combatant and assassin implants with the fracture rounds and the lightweight arms and you can do, well, basically what I did in the intro clip. It's simply dirty. Hilarious. I will admit I was laughing my ass off the whole process, but man, it's dirty and it's unhealthy for the game right now. But as I said before, we know that it's being nerfed this week and this is what REL has confirmed for us so far. The AOE damage from the fracture bolts is being nerfed, the hip fire of the lightweight arms is being nerfed, the projectile size overall is being nerfed, and the minimum damage fall off range is also being reeled in. And these are all changes that are aimed to address the fracture bolt abuse issue and some of the long range capabilities of the weapon as well. But that's not where the problems stop for me here. You know, remove the attachments from the equation entirely and there's still some big issues at the core of this weapon's functionality. Spammability is a big one for me. The weapon minus the fracture round abuse is essentially a scout rifle that has a higher damage payload, no recoil, and above all else, an effective magazine size of 40 rounds that can be continuously fired without the need to compensate for any recoil or take a moment to reload your weapon. A crossbow that dishes out this kind of damage payload should be a weapon that you have to take your time with. It should require you to play methodically and only take the shots you know you can hit, and as such rewarding you with that significant damage payload. But as a 
of right now, all you have to do is take pot shots at the target until you adjust to land the hits. There is simply no punishment to missing a shot with this thing, and in addition to that, if an engineer's ammo pack happens to appear and you're doing, say, a defensive hold in an advantageous position, then you never ever have to stop shooting this thing, and that's a big fucking problem. So beyond those proposed changes we went over beforehand, the weapon simply needs to have a dedicated magazine size that adds some downtime. I'm thinking four rounds at an absolute max, and it's refire rate needs to be lowered. It simply needs to be a whole lot less spammable, or it needs more recoil, or something like that. If this weapon is going to remain in the game at all, it can't be a better than average scout rifle on a class that has the ability to traverse everything in the game. There's a reason scout rifles haven't been added to light assaults before, and this is a testament to why this is the case. And as a result, the weapon needs to be conservatively balanced if it's to stay in the game at all, in my opinion. Which does lead me onto a tangent that I want to go down for the rest of this video, guys. And I feel like the crossbow acts as a perfect catalyst for us to have this conversation. I want to touch on the importance of testing and using the test server, and a scary trend that I'm noticing. We as a community are lucky to have access to the public test server. There's a lot of live service games that have no such thing, and the only testing that can be done is when the live service environment actually gets those changes to the gameplay experience. And some of these changes can damage the gameplay experience. Hell, the Battlefield 5 time to kill pass that was made and then reverted soon after is a perfect example of that happening in the industry. When things in a live service environment aren't properly tested and it ends up hurting the game, things get rough quickly and you lose dedicated players. So Planetside's testing server is a golden opportunity to avoid this stuff. And I'll be the first person to admit that not everything gets caught in testing environments when looking at new items and balance changes. Less players play on test, which means that you've got a smaller pool of mentalities and approaches to new things, and players simply care less about min-maxing their farming capabilities on test because they aren't playing on their actual characters. So potential exploits may not be found either during the testing environment environment, especially considering just how many implants and potential loadout combinations there are in Planet Side 2. However, I am certain that the community would have been raising a lot of red flags about this thing as soon as they got their hands on it in a testing environment before it came to the live game. But it never got tested. It was pushed to the live server before we knew anything about the weapon. We knew it was coming, we didn't know how it was going to function though. And well, the result has been the past weekend, which has been incredibly frustrating to play if you aren't using the damn thing. Hell, I used the thing exclusively all weekend and was still frustrated because practically all of my deaths were to the damn thing. Summit 1G decided to come to the game again this weekend and, um, yeah, look, he was having a pretty rough day. The point is, this weapon should have been tested, no questions asked, and if that meant that this weapon came out after the launch of the Halloween event, that would have been fine. It would have been a lot better for the game as opposed to where we are now. And my concern going forward is that the testing cycles this past year of the game's development have been getting progressively shorter and shorter over time. And I've brushed it aside a couple of times now, but I'm starting to see a pattern that is concerning me. Let's wind the clock back a bit. The Containment Sites and Chapter 3 campaign update was the first major content drop of the year, I guess. Outfit Wars came first, but this to me was the first major content drop for the live server experience, if you will. Now that saw a closed doors beta test to get the ball rolling on initial feedback, followed by two community play tests to further improve the base under larger scale fights. Now I know that a good amount of you absolutely despise containment sites, so on and so forth, but let me be the first to tell you that the battle flow in those bases has improved tensfold by comparison to where they were initially. The opportunity for feedback to circulate and be acted upon before going to the live game was huge for their playability. Fast forward a little bit to the integration update, and that also had a closed test with a small portion of the community to look for technical faults and core issues, all well and good so far. But then it had a one week deployment to the live server. No organized play test, nothing of the sort. There was so much content there, and there simply wasn't a lot of time to test it all thoroughly and get meaningful feedback to the developers, let alone enough time for them to act on said feedback. I was caught by surprise by how quickly that update went to the live game, and I mean, hey, to this day, the Chimera battle tank still doesn't have a unique main battle tank ability to put it on a level playing field with the rest of the armor in the game. The new player experience update didn't have a closed testing run to it, which is fair considering that for the most part, it was all about new player onboarding and that could have all been tested on a public environment anyway, but that also only spent a week 
on the test server. And it would have been great to get some more time to test the more meta changes to things like implants and suit slots where, you know, things could have been tweaked a bit more to avoid making a return later on. And then here we are today, with an update that added a practically game-breaking weapon that didn't get any testing and even worse, was harming the flow of the game on a weekend when a prolific content creator came to the game who had a large audience of potential new players watching. And ironically, the reason as to why it was being criticised so heavily wasn't even the reason people had concerns initially when the developers announced it. I have always been an advocate for this game, ladies and gentlemen. I care about Planetside, and while at times it's an abusive relationship that I can't get away from, I still love this game. So my criticisms here today come from a place of passion. I want the game to continue to grow, and I want to continue to see solid game updates come out regularly. But when I see stuff happening that concerns me, I call it out, and I've noticed a trend I don't really like, and I'm hoping it's just an unfortunate coincidence at this stage. The crossbow is without a doubt a problem in the game right now, and it is being addressed to a certain extent, and I still think it should be addressed even more so, but nonetheless, this for me has more importantly highlighted a bit of a problem with the Planetside 2's testing environment at the moment. To the Planetside 2 developers, please take your time with testing. The community will 100% prefer updates coming out at a slower pace if we see less destructive impacts on live and hopefully we can avoid experiences like this emerging again in the future. So guys, today that's going to wrap up today's video talking about the Seeker HLX and, you know, some corresponding concerns I have with the game at the moment. As always, guys, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to backhand the like button. It goes a long way to supporting the channel. If you didn't like it, well, that dislike button works as well. Make sure you hit the subscribe button as well to keep up to date for when we release our Seeker HLX review once the patches go live for it. It'll be interesting to see how the weapon performs post-patch as well, and that's when we're doing our official review for the weapon. And as for always, guys, Discord, Twitter, and Twitch, even though we don't really use Twitch a whole lot at the moment, is linked in the description down below for your viewing pleasure as well. Once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Take care, guys. Have a good one.